there's a young man who's a construction worker. And he's working on the construction of a masjid, of a big grand mosque. And at the completion of the construction of this masjid, the sultan who ordered the construction of the masjid, he wanted all of the construction workers to leave. And the reason is because his daughter had asked him, this is the, the, the princess, the sultan's daughter, uh, she made a special request that after the construction of, the, of this big beautiful grand masjid is finished, she wanted to be the first one to go into that masjid and pray two rakahs in the musalla with no one else there. So this was the request of the princess. So it's the, the masjid is finished, the construction workers leave, and this one construction worker, he was falling behind, he was late, and he didn't realize that everyone else had already left, and uh, they had allowed the princess into the masjid to go pray. So as he's leaving, he catches a glimpse of the princess inside the musalla of the masjid praying two rakahs of nafl. And the scene was just so incredible to him. It was such an amazing scene. And he basically just fell in love with the princess. It was, the, it was just a very beautiful image to him and he fell in love with her. And it became more than that, he became infatuated with her. So when he came home, he told his mother about what had happened and he said, you have to go to the Sultan and ask for the princess's hand in marriage. And the mother said, I can't do that. You're a construction worker. No one's like, you know, the Sultan's not going to have him, uh, his daughter marry you. But this, this construction worker became infatuated. He couldn't work. He couldn't think. He couldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. He was just in a miserable state. And the mother, out of fearing for her son and his well-being, she, was, she realized that if she doesn't do something, he may die because he's refusing food and water at this point. So she goes to the palace and she asks to speak to the sultan and you know, the guards, they turn her away. And she insists and she says, my son is going to die. I have to talk to the sultan. So finally, they let her talk to the sultan. And she mentions the story to the sultan and the sultan asks that she come back with the construction worker. So they come back together and he tells the construction worker, after everyone leaves, the masjid that night time after Aisha prayer, you have to come and pray Qiyam in this masjid for 40 nights. If you come and pray Qiyam in this masjid for 40 nights straight, I will let you marry my daughter. And he said, there will be someone there to, to make sure that you come. And if you miss a day, we'll know about it. So in 40 days, I want, uh, you know, if you fulfill your end of the bargain, I will let you consider my daughter for marriage. So the construction worker is excited. You know, this is a chance at life. So he goes the first day and he prays Qiyam in the masjid after everyone leaves. And he goes the second day and the third. And after a few weeks, he notices that he's getting better. He's eating again, he's drinking again. He cares about life again. And eventually he starts to really, really enjoy coming to the masjid and praying Qiyam when everyone else has left to such an extent that he starts to pray to Allah, that Allah never takes away these beautiful moments that he has with him, alone in solitude, praying to him in the night. So 40 days pass, 50 days pass, 60 days pass, 70 days pass, and eventually the Sultan asks to see the construction worker. And he says, how come you didn't come see me? You fulfilled your end of the bargain. You prayed all 40 nights. We saw that you prayed. How come you didn't come and see me? And the construction worker turns to the Sultan and he says, before I saw your daughter, my heart was empty. And the first thing of beauty that my heart was exposed to was your daughter. And that's why it grabbed onto that experience. But then after I started praying in the masjid for 40 nights, my heart witnessed a beauty that was much greater than her. My heart witnessed a beauty that it has never felt before. And he, and he tells the Sultan, he goes on to say, thank you so much for offering me your daughter uh, to consider, but I am happy where I am and I am in no need of her. And he goes on his way. And he doesn't marry the princess because he had found a love and a beauty and a happiness that was much greater than uh, the, just seeing the princess that one time. 
And this was the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the beauty of a close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that only the one who has experienced it can really talk about it. Or can, and, and even if they were to try to talk about it, it doesn't do it justice. And Ibn Taymiyyah, he talked about this. He said, the one who does not enjoy the Jannah of this life will not enjoy the Jannah of the next life. And the scholars talked about what did Ibn Taymiyyah mean. And it's to, this, this, to be in a state where the slave of Allah loves Allah so much and is pleased with their Lord. And Allah loves his servant so much and is pleased with his servant. And this is mentioned in the Quran, radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. Uh, this is referring to the companions. But it's this mutual relationship of love with the Creator. When we talk about the categories of sweetness of Iman, the, to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than we love everyone and anything else, including ourselves, is something that brings the sweetness of Iman. And you could think, how could loving someone other than myself bring happiness? Only when it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.